welcome everybody to this episode of what if spoiler reviews episode five season one from the geek <laughs> buddies <gasps> <gasps> We are so stupid. We are stupid. Yeah, I'm sure no one has done that at any of their reviews. We are we are so original with what we're doing. But hey, uh, it's an we're ex- like we're like super original. So <laughs> whatever. It's an exciting episode. What if zombies is the title? But what if the Avengers were zombies? Really is the subtitle. Here we're going to talk about this entire episode, break it all down, uh, and before we introduce ourselves, let's welcome back to the show after a little bit of a hiatus, the great Emma Fife. How are you, Emma? I'm good. I um, recovered from my unfortunate breakthrough case of COVID. I had a nice vacation, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I am. I am back in action and what an episode to come back for right Boom. right overall we're gonna get to it by the way shout out to your ted lasso believe sign right behind you oh shout yes out. thank you that oh. uh that was from one of the uh ted lasso pop-ups that we had here oh. in los angeles where you nice. could get the shortbread biscuits in a little oh pink God. box oh, and wow. and p.s those shortbread biscuits did yeah. not disappoint no oh, they were too? Oh, delicious really? oh yeah wow. nice nice the only thing that disappointed was they gave you three versus <laughs> i believe the six or eight that rebecca gets yes every it's week. true it's true wow. well there it is shannon it's never enough mcclung has struck again okay well, I, I believe I i'm disappointed <laughs> Well, let's get into it. Uh, first, we're going to introduce ourselves. Uh, I am the outlaw, John Roker, writer, producer, and host here on uh, the uh, Geek Buddies in the Outlaw Nation. Mike? I am Michael Vogel. I'm a writer and producer of animated TV shows and movies. Shan? And this is Shannon McClung. I'm an animation writer and a television actor where you may have seen me on Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and Silicon Valley. Yeah, nice stuff. Uh, We're going to get into the episode. Uh, This is the first of two spoiler warnings. We are going to spoil the episode. If you haven't seen the episode, go back and watch it. Enjoy the 32 minutes of zombie goodness and come all back and hang out with us. Uh, We're going to talk overall our feelings about the episode now and then give you one more spoiler warning. So, Mike, let's start with you. Very interesting episode. Went through a number of places. We're picking up at a certain time in the MCU. It's kind of right around Infinity War time, and then all this stuff happens. So, uh, what was your overall feeling about this episode? Completely a very unusual episode in the season so far. Well, yeah, I think one of the things that, I, uh, that I'll say about this episode is I think this is the most fan service episode oh, of What If. Ooh, but, but usually when you use the phrase fan service, you mean bad. Like usually mm. fan service means you didn't tell a great story, you just tried to please the fans. Right. This is one of those great and rare examples where they really knew what they were doing and gave us an awesome, fun, super cool episode filled with zombie movie homages that also was super fan servicey. Like you wanted Bucky versus Cap, you got it. You wanted the Hulk versus Scarlet Witch, <laughs> you wanted Scarlet Witch and Vision, you wanted Ant-Man, Wingardium Leviosing, like you got it. You get it all. Like this was like this was just a wealth of geeky awesomeness tied together in a very kind of cool, fun, uh very typical in all the right ways zombie movie. Yeah. Um, so I, I had an absolute blast watching this. And there's just so many things to talk about. Yeah. You wanted a one leg T'Challa? You got a one leg You got it. Let's answer the game there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Emma Fife, let's go to you next. Overall, what did you think of this episode? Coming out of the Doctor Strange episode, which a lot of people, including me, felt was their favorite. What did you think about this one? I love spider-man that's really (laughs) one of my biggest takeaways from this is like what a pure and lovely boy uh that made me really really happy i loved all of the homages to existing zombie fiction Mm. uh therein i i really like zombie stuff Mm -hmm. um so this i felt was a very strong episode in terms of again like really getting into the fan service of it all, but not in a way that felt cheap and they put it in there just because people wanted to see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, And then shout out to Hudson Thames. I think that's how you say his last name. He is the voice of Peter Parker in this episode. He was great. Fantastic job. Yeah, you're right. Sitting in for Tom Holland for sure. Everybody else is pretty much the voice 
for the character that has been in there, which is pretty incredible. So even David does Malchian's Kirk, Kurt has a fun a little uh, uh, time in this episode. Shannon, what did you think overall on this one? You know, zombies, zo- and, and, and of course, uh, we touch base with the one division situation a little bit as we go along, but also Hope Van Dyne is a little bit of the hero for me in this episode, which was nice to see. What did yeah. you think overall? I thought it was a blast. I mean, yeah. like, I think one of my favorite, not being a huge zombie fan to begin with, mm. one of my favorite zombie movies from, the, from you know, the past couple decades has been Zombieland. And this was like, let's take Zombieland yes. and take Marvel and slam them yeah. together. I mean, I think, <laughs> I think you still do have those stakes. You do have some nice emotional moments. You have some very nice voice work from actors who are not necessarily known to be uh, VO performers. Yeah. Um, and overall, it was just so much fun and i love how much play a lot of the mcu supporting cast got in this mm, i mean yeah talking yeah. about david desmalshian talking about john favreau even uh even uh Denai guerrero with uh with mm-hmm. okoye I, I mean it just yeah. so so much fun and on the heels of a the tremendous dr strange episode but that yeah. was a pretty heavy episode this one was just this one was just fun and yeah. and i really enjoyed it yeah, absolutely. I echo all three of you's feelings about this episode. I enjoyed the heck out of it. Watched it twice today. Got to get ready for this review. Um, I did think that this was such a uh, interesting decision to make. You know, we kind of set up where we're, it feels like we're setting up this um, overall storyline with this uh, tentacle uh, creature. And now we make a complete left turn into the zombie stuff. And it's part one of a continued story. So where is that going to lead us? So this is very, very interesting, but really enjoyed the acting. As you said, Shannon, a lot of uh, time with these uh, uh, sort of secondary characters in the MCU. Paul Rudd almost stole the whole damn thing as soon as he showed up, yeah. which was really funny. Uh, and just overall, top to bottom, there were some great hero moments. There were some tough losses. There were some shocking deaths. Everything you wanted in a 32-minute episode, uh, including credits. Yeah, Mike, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I mean, for for the fact that it's super fun and gross and gory and all the things you want, there are three moments in this episode that hit you in the feels so hard. And, like, it's even harder because you're not, like, expecting it to come. And then you're like, oh, this is a fun zombie. Oh, shit, what did you do to me? Like, it was, like, some... Some big feels moments. Yeah, and as Emma said, it hits the beats of these zombie movies that we've seen before with shocking deaths in zombie movies. Those are always the worst, but also what makes those zombie movies so great because you don't see it coming. Uh, and Walking Dead's been living off that for seasons. Now, so, uh, All right, let's move on. Okay, so this is your final spoiler warning. If you haven't seen the episode, we are about to spoil it now. We're going to go section by section through uh, the episode and get our thoughts on it overall. So we start with Bruce Banner landing in the sanctum of santorum like he does in infinity war no one is there no one greets him there's no wong there's no strange he goes out and he sees ebony ma and is that is that corvus glaive is that his name or black Dwarf? call obsidian well, call obsidian, call obsidian. That's call obsidian there and mm-hmm. just when they're about to get him the avengers show up bruce thinks he's saved uh uh and the avengers certainly take care of those two but then bruce notices oh god oh there's something's really wrong here and the Avengers are eating Ma and Cull Obsidian, uh, and they are zombies. What a big surprise here. He tries to run, but Iron Man and Strange go after him, and Wong as well. And just as he's about to get eaten by Wong through one of those portals, Strange's cape has been, come, has been there, kind of fending him off, kind of keeps Wong from eating him. And then eventually Wasp shows up with her insects, saves Banner, decapitates Iron Man, Spider- Spider-Man swings him away, and the Watcher tells us that this all happened because of Hank Pym, of course, who went to get Janet in the quantum realm, and she was affected with a virus when he found her in this universe. They came, they come, he, she, she attacks him, and he has a, a moment of levity, does the watcher. He says, ugh, that happened. Uh, then the <laughs> Pyms end up back at the, to, at the lab. Ant-Man is eaten because he's uh, caught by surprise. Wasp gets away. We hear from the watcher that the in 24 hours, the West Coast was completely consumed by these zombies. The Avengers showed up to try to stop them, but Hank Pym, uh, in, in Ant-Man form, takes a bite out of Captain America's neck, then goes full size and attacks him. Then the zombies attack all the Avengers. Uh, and then we then we cut to, and so we find out the Avengers, that that's how they all became zombies. And we see T'Challa, we see Hawkeye, we see Black Widow, we see Captain America, we see Iron Man. We see them all there, and we think they're all zombies now going forward. Uh, then there's a funny cut to Spider-Man showing his video. Because remember, this is Spider-Man after Homecoming, before far from home so he's going to show his video high school video about the zombie apocalypse as uh, one of you mentioned very similar to 
um, Zombieland using Happy Hogan and Kurt from Ant-Man and Bucky Barnes and Sharon Carter is here as well. So nice to see Sharon Carter in here. And Okoye shows up, introduces herself to Banner. Uh, they see that they've got a beacon that shows them that another survivor camp is uh, is there in Camp Lehigh in New Jersey, which was the first Avengers uh, uh, headquarters, and they could have an equipment for a cure. So um, this is a hell of a beginning, Michael. What did you think about all of the zombies here that were introduced and then the story up until this point where we're now all caught up in present day and present time? Well, I think it's great. You know, like, so obviously the Marvel Zombies is based uh, loosely, this is based loosely on a pre-existing comic, the Robert Kirkman Marvel Zombies series, which was a ton of fun. Now, in that series, all of the superhero zombies could talk. So you got a lot of fun back and forth between them. And here, I think they made the really smart move of kind of like making them more zombie-like, but still letting them keep their powers and some level of autonomy that zombies don't usually have, which makes them much more threatening. But the big difference here is that they've set it smack dab in the beginning of Infinity War, which I think is super great. Like, I love the way that they keep sort of giving us... A, a bit of a movie that we know so that we can see it zigzag in the other direction. I also thought the idea that having like Hank Pym going to get Janet in the quantum realm being the kickoff of all of this was super, super smart because Mm -hmm. those two things are so close to each other in the MCU. I think Shannon and I Mm -hmm. were talking about this. I think we now have a timeline. Like we obviously knew that Ant-Man and the Wasp happened right before the events of Infinity War and then the post credit scenes of Ant-Man and Wasp were at the snap, but we now actually have a timeline for it, which is two weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, They make it really clear. And I think that's really, really interesting. I think Doctor Strange's cape is making a case to be the MVP of the Marvel <laughs> Universe. Uh, that that cape is not messing around. I want that cape with me at all times. Um, yeah, I thought all the action at the beginning, kind of like, you know, giving us the mirror of the Infinity War scene and then just everything going to shit as things happen, as they usually do in zombie movies was great. And then jumping over to the Spider-Man video to give mm. us oh the very, in addition to it being like very Peter Parker, very Spidey, uh, it, it's, it, it keeps things light and fun. And it just goes down the line of letting you know exactly who is on the team, who the survivors are right. in a really quick and efficient way within 30 minutes. I particularly loved the skills that came up for each of the characters. Uh, you know, Happy got, uh, his skills were driving, coffee, and boxing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kurt, languages, Slavic folklore, and crime. <laughs> Bucky, murder, killer arm, heavy sleeper. <laughs> and Sharon Carter gets the best one. She is good at spycraft, first aid, and eulogies. Because, <laughs> because she gave that eulogy in Civil War. And it's just like, that was what was great about this episode, is you have this huge threat of these zombies, but like most zombie movies, uh, kind of in modern zombie era, there's also a little bit of fun and silliness that goes with the gore and the violence and the heaviness. And I thought yeah. they did such a good job of kind of setting up each of these characters, showing who the team was. And it's a great team, kind of to Shannon's point. So, you know, it's not... It's not all the heavy hitters. I mean, fucking Kurt from Ant Man. Like, yeah. it's like that's such a random choice. Although it makes sense given that the Hank and Scott were where it started. But it was just, it's a great combination of characters. Uh, Peter Parker is just owning things so far. Uh, and then I really kind of just enjoyed the very small but very cool looking detail that they are all hiding away in shipping containers mm. that are webbed up in the middle of the city that Peter mm. webbed up to kind of keep them away from everything, which they don't ever really comment on or make a big deal out of. They just show it. But yeah. fuck, that's a cool idea. Yeah, it's brilliant. Emma, what did you think about this whole opening and the brilliance, as Michael pointed out, of, of the containers being there and in the, in the uh, webbed up up there on top of everybody, but also how they chose which characters to be the survivors in this episode to fight against these zombies? Well, again, I do think it's really fun that we're seeing all of these sort of secondary characters get mm. an opportunity to be in the spotlight here uh i i loved that sharon carter was included in this group uh especially given i mean look i've got a lot of theories about falcon and the winter soldier as do we all as do we all Uh, but it was it was nice to just see regular old sharon carter uh in business with everybody and again like the the framing of the zombie land montage Mm. of here are tips to survive the zombie apocalypse could have felt 
very cheap, but because it's the character of Peter Parker and he's talking to the Camp Carter and whatnot, like that is very in character for him. Yeah. So I think it works really, really well in the fact that he is again and and again, like it it puts it in that nice in between of very serious downtrodden zombie story and comedy zombie story because right. that's the thing is I, I feel that this lives in that nice sweet spot that we see in something like a Shaun of the Dead or honestly mm. like the um Zack Snyder version yeah. of uh Dawn, oh, of, the yeah. Dead Dawn of the Dead by James yeah. Gunn um so again like I I think that that to me like they establish the tone so quickly in yeah. this opening here where you get very similarly to the format of Dawn of the Dead, this very shocking, violent opening. And then it transitions into like, okay, well, here's our, here's our fun survivor crew. Uh, and that, and that just really worked for me. And again, it puts you in a place where you are, you care a lot about the characters who have survived yeah. and they sort of reference this idea later on of, oh, this person was your friend right but i i don't feel grief about it in this moment yeah. um because again it doesn't allow you to really be in the in the space of truly considering this whole idea of oh all of like the most powerful avengers are zombies so we mm -hmm. seem pretty screwed here um and also <laughs> and also having hope van dyne be the one who comes to the rescue really early on i thought was a really strong choice in addition to the the what if catalyst of it was Janet Van Dyne who right. was who mm. had this brain disease basically from being in the quantum realm. That all really right. worked for me. Yeah, absolutely. And we find out Hope's guilt over the situation later on in the episode, yeah. how that plays out, which gives her an impetus to be kind of a lead hero in this. I mean, she's in essence leading the team. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, that's so great to see because I get so frustrated sometimes with the Ant Man movies. I hope Van Dyne is so much more capable than my boy <laughs> Paul Rudd's character. Oh, yeah. But it's got but you know, it is within the construct of what you can do. So letting her have a moment to shine in this well, episode, I think is great. Yeah. And real quickly before oh, Shannon yeah. weighs in, just on that hope front, I think the other thing that what if does really good is it's setting up some of these characters to us for us to have a different expectation of them in yep. phase four and beyond. Down the like road. Evangeline point. Lily hasn't had a ton of time to play Hope no. outside of Ant-Man and Wasp. She had some mm -hmm. scenes in Endgame, but because yeah. of this episode, if she showed up and took like a leader, a more leadership role in the Avengers, you'd kind of be like, yeah, I well, can does see it, that. And doesn't Wasp lead the Avengers at one point in the comics? I thought she became a leader of the Avengers in oh, some yeah. in the, uh, the run. Janet, so, was it Janet? Janet, so, I okay. think more so than uh, Hope. But yeah, but yes, but yes, mm -hmm. Wasp does stuff. have that uh, senior member of the Avengers kind of cachet. I like it. Uh, Shannon, what stood out for you from this opening? I mean, I'm sure you were enjoying the hell out of gleefully seeing these situations come to life from the mm -hmm. comics onto the screen. What'd you think? Well, the thing that caught my eye right at the beginning, and this has nothing to do with, with zombie movies, mm. but the fact that after the what if title uh, splashed on screen and how the camera tilted down in space, I'm like, well, that's a Star Wars move. That's not a, that's mm. not a zombie movie, move, mm. but the moment yeah. it sh shifted down, I was like, oh, so what are we, what are we getting here? Um, frightening how much more efficient the trio of Iron Man, Doctor Strange, and Wong are as zombies <laughs> than they are as people in their dorm Great point. Great point. <laughs> well, they can't Infinity use War. language. Like, they don't have the same control over language, so they can't constantly be arguing with one another. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or equipping yeah. each other. You, yeah. In, yeah, I mean, when you're Infinity a zombie, War, you have one, you all have the same motivation, and it's to eat people. So in, in, Infinity War, it's an actual slugfest. They did it in about... 45 seconds yeah, yeah. Point. a real nice nod that i thought with wong was that big that great power move at the end of their their fight in infinity war when uh Cole obsidian loses his hand as he shuts the portal it's the same move that gets him decapitated in in right. this which i was yeah. like oh that's that's a lot of fun yeah. um i loved the the watcher joke which was the first time i mean delivered just I mean, Jeff, Jeffrey Wright delivers many a thing perfectly, but it just reminded me of Audrey Brower from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh, yeah. Oof, that happened. <laughs> Going into the instructional <laughs> video, uh, oh, Das no. yeah, there we go. <laughs> Das Malchian, uh, <laughs> ooh, here I come, bad zombie. I mean, just so funny. Animated David Das Malchian. That is a handsome, handsome dude. I know. I was surprised <laughs> by that. <laughs> yeah, they, they kind of animated sad. him really handsome. Yeah, I mean... Like yeah, uh, the the animated form really did him a lot. Of I mean, he has really strong features, and I think right. that really works on an animated face. It does, yeah. 
Yeah. And I, I mean, froze he, for a second because I was like, wait, Kurt, who's Kurt? Which one's Kurt? And I was like, that yeah, ain't David does not well. <laughs> I mean, he he had serious uh, Prince Eric from Little Mermaid vibes right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. un, un, until until he spoke. Um, <laughs> and, and I thought it was hilarious that uh, John Favreau, even in animated form, doesn't have to do much for us to start laughing. I mean, the yeah. moment we see him, it's like, oh, yeah. this is so funny. <laughs> the great thing about the crew that they assembled for this is these are characters that were either entirely absent from Infinity War oh, yeah. or did not have a ton to do. Like, you know, you wonder, like, th that was the big thing when Infinity War came out, was like, where are Ant-Man and the Wasp? Where are Ant-Man yeah. and the Wasp? And now yeah. you kind of get them in this setting. And again, seeing how how much more capable mm. Hope is than Scott. Be like, I, I don't know what's gonna happen in Quantum Mania, but I feel like Scott Lang should probably take a back seat yeah. if things get dicey, because she's clearly way better at the it, fighting. It's that trope that's so frustrating when we watch superhero movies, like Aquaman. Mira could have totally run Atlantis from the first minute of that damn movie. It was him, <laughs> her lugging around the big dope through the whole movie until he figured <laughs> it out that he could run Atlantis himself. It's the same thing with, uh, and you know, Potter's the same way. Hermione should absolutely be the one, for God's sake. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, all right, they show up, uh, they all show up at Grand Central Station after uh, Happy makes a joke about, ah, you thought zombies were bad, we still gotta go to Jersey. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's always time for a Jersey joke, I guess. They, they split into two groups or three groups, really, um, on Okoye's command. And uh, I love Peter saying, "What well, you've never seen movies? And she's like, we have American reality shows. Oh, sick burn. Oh, uh, yeah, so we don't. <laughs> it's very funny. Uh, Kurt Banner, Wasp, Spidey, and Sharon try to start the train that's on the track. I'm not sorry, sorry. Uh, Kurt Banner, Wasp, and Spidey try to start the train that's moving on the track. Happy and Sharon are on another track themselves. Uh, they see that they can't get it going. Wasp goes inside to try to get it going with the train, try to spark the engine a little bit. Nothing's really happening. Spider-Man comes down with his webs to try to yank it a little bit. But uh, Happy and Sharon are on another track, and Happy is taken, shot by an arrow, uh, which is really wa wacky. And he has his little Iron Man hand stuff that he's going blam, blam on everybody. Uh, and then uh, just when Sharon notices what's going on, she gets pinned to the wall. So clearly this is Hawkeye. We cut to a uh, Falcon zombie attacking uh, Okoye and Bucky there. Falcon almost subdues Bucky after a bit of a back and forth. But then Okoye cuts him in half. We'll get that joke that you guys referenced there. Uh, sorry, that was your friend. I don't feel strangely bad about this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but just then, uh, we go back to Sharon who shoots Happy with his own Iron Man hand after Happy has become a zombie and comes after her. She takes the Iron Man hand for herself. Then we cut to Peter yanking the train when zombies show up. Wasp holds them off until Okoye, Bucky, and Sharon can get on board. Uh, Stranger's Cape saves Peter from the zombies, and they start heading down the tracks. Sharon is walking to the back, and hears a noise on the roof. God damn it, it's Cap. And he subdues her and eats her. Uh, make that symbolism what you want out of there. Bucky hears the commotion, runs to Cap, and they have a heck of a fight that ends with Bucky slicing him in half as Wasp flies into Sharon's mouth. Then Wasp goes full size and explode Sharon from the inside out. Banner and Kurt run in to see that hope is cut. That zombie moment in any movie, you've been cut, you might be infected. Emma, I loved this section of, of this episode. Them all kind of splitting apart and then Okoye saying, yeah, we should have maybe stayed together. But overall, what did you think about how they split them up and got them in these different adventures, just like you would see in a zombie movie, and then they all happen to come back together with a couple of losses? Look. First of all, I love anything with zombies and trains. Uh, <laughs> yes, Train to Busan. Uh, if you've yes. not seen Train to Busan, it's excellent. Uh, yeah. Also, Cabinary of the Iron Fortress is a great anime oh. series about zombies and a train. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, so once again, it's like there's so much here that appeals to me as a fan of zombie media. Mm. Um, <laughs> the, the, the very extended continuation of Walking Dead notwithstanding. Um, <laughs> gave up on that a while ago. But um, but yeah, I, I, I like the way that they split up the group. I loved the whole thing with Peter trying to use the, the webs to get the train started and whatnot. Yeah. And and of course, the MVP, the Cloak of Levitation. Seriously. <laughs> truly, truly. That is, if there's anybody in the MCU that you want on your side, it's just the Cloak. Yeah. Uh, and especially, I love that it, it that in here because Doctor Strange we know is already a zombie like to just see it acting independently of him where it's like no like because he changed even though he's my pal like I get it I'm I'm still I'm still on the side of good mm -hmm. uh so to speak 
Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I liked the scene where, uh, where they had Hawkeye come in because again, mm. like that, that I think was something that was pretty fun about this episode overall is that the Avengers characters as zombies were still able to use their Avengers mm. abilities instead of just being like wander around mindless right. zombies, even though we we see zombie hordes like that within this episode as well, who are just regular civilians, but they haven't lost their abilities. And so, you know, having Hawkeye come in and it's like, oh man, it's a zombie who can use tools. That's right. that's always <laughs> horrifying. And yeah. And and so that I think is kind of the thing where it's like, okay, well, you're living in this world of sort of not only scary fast zombies, but scary fast zombies who can still use their, you know, Captain America shield. Yeah. Um and uh and yeah, I mean the the Bucky versus Cap fight was great. Oh. It was so satisfying uh to see it, it was just I I like Bucky a lot as a character, and so it was really nice to see him get to be part of the hero team because so often he is the one that does get the you know i mean his whole storyline is the one that he he got brainwashed and he was right, effectively yeah. a zombie so to speak for hydra um and yeah exactly and and so like it's cool to see him be able to maintain his own autonomy i loved that sharon uh took the little like iron man hand thing from happy even though she didn't last very long after that uh right. it was still really fun to see sharon have like a really a, a really strong moment in the fight yeah agreed shannon what'd you think about this whole uh splitting up and then all the separate battles they get into before they end up on that train and head uh, head forward well again the zombie versions of these characters are really more efficient <laughs> than, than they are in real life i mean throughout the movies it's all it's you know it's it's an easy it's an easy joke to make it's like well you know you've got iron man with his with his iron iron you've got thor with his hammer and you've got hawkeye a guy that shoots a bow and arrow yeah. and then you see just how dangerous he can be like right off the bat the whole blam thing the fact that all of our <laughs> Heroes oh who turn into zombies retain a little bit of their of their powers, and Happy Hogan retains his blamness. <laughs> I thought was so freaking funny as he gets pulled into oh, the dark. Yeah. And there is there is a beat and one last blam that I have to think probably was not scripted. That was like John Favreau being like, "No, no, no let me just do one more. It's gonna be yeah. funny." <laughs> and then you get when Hope kind of. Uh, you know, flies in to save the day. You get that nice Ant Man theme, like that bump, yep. bump, 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 right. bump, bump, bump. It was just, you know, it was just a blast. And to what Emma was saying, like the the Bucky Cap fight, it's hmm. it's very reminiscent of their fight in Winter Soldier. Yeah. Like, you know, just the sides have been flipped, and the fact that Bucky not only Darth Mauls him with the shield, but he throws a line at him that it's the end of the line for you, buddy. <laughs> I mean, this line that has always been sort of an emotional touchstone between the two of them is almost used as sort of like uh you know the 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 capper to this to this great moment um and you know as soon as you see hope uh hope is is cut i mean oh. it's, it brings oh. it back down it's yeah. it's it's a bummer like even though like the moment john favreau starts saying blam as a zombie it's like all right whatever 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 uh, emotional stakes were here eh, they're kind of getting pushed out the window a yeah. little yeah, bit yeah. but then hope getting getting injured uh, it really brings it brings it back, and and you, suddenly you're emotionally invested again. Well, and I I think there's something here to be said. Remember, this is before Falcon and Winter Soldier, sir. So Falcon getting cut in half isn't going to affect Bucky <laughs> as we might think. Had Falcon and Winter Soldier happened, you know, I mean, so oh, the, of course, this, of course. So, this, so it's a little easier to do that here and have his response come out the way it does. And with the with the Sharon, I mean, the Captain America. I mean, that's a whole thing, right? Because so many people were so against captain america and sharon in that kiss and then mm -hmm. seeing you know that he's like essentially uh, taking her off the planet killing her and eating her i was like moving her out of the way in essence so it's just kind of so interesting <laughs> and then you have them going at each other so like bucky in essence loses i think just about every connection he has to that cap world right because he loses sharon cap and falcon all in yep. one kind of section here. So really interesting to be Bucky be the last one standing from that whole uh, group of people in that side of the story of the MCU. So I really enjoyed that kind of aspect. And Shannon, you might be hitting on something that's very curious to me. 
are the writers saying something about the fact that if these movies could be a lot shorter if these people didn't talk so much and were focused <laughs> on one separate the one thing fully all of them it would be a more linear movie for sure um mikey what did you think about this whole section of the fights and everything and the the zombie uh, uh, uh tenants that they hit throughout this uh, section of the sh of the show I mean, it's great. I do have to say, like, when I saw Civil War and Peter Parker kind of came up with the, hey, have you guys seen that old movie, Empire Strikes Back? Like, it was such a great moment. Yes. But the fact that this has become sort of a part of Peter Parker's <laughs> personality, like the Empire Strikes Back beat, the aliens beat in, uh, in Infinity War, and then this great moment where he's the one who gets to be like, have you do you not have horror movies in Wakanda and when Okoye gives up when she just comes right back with that we've got American reality television it's great and then like you were saying John like Kurt's response to that yeah. which is boom goes the dynamite that was solid burn on all of us like it was just like it was a one two three punch that I was like god this writing is great like this is this is so solid um yeah like everybody said it's great to see the zombies uh, be, as Shannon says, more efficient versions of themselves in this movie. But it's also great, like, part of every great zombie movie is when you see the group of people that have been thrown together yeah. uh, kind of work as a team. And what's great about the Marvel Universe is when we get to see all the heroes use their skills together. And this was such a unique blend of heroes to have, you know, Wasp flying into the train while Bruce is trying to, f and Kurt are trying to figure out things, and Spidey's out there with the webs. Like, it was just such a great blend of people, everyone doing their thing yeah. i was shocked when they just split falcon straight down the middle <laughs> no <laughs> doubt <laughs> also also okoye i mean i don't know I, I i mean i know everyone loves adore milage like okoye to me is like a main marvel member at this point like yeah. she is yeah. so badass and she is so cool and i just want to see more and more and more of her and i'm glad she's showing up as often as she is in what if um I think that the, uh, yeah, the Cap Sharon fight was great. Uh, Bucky versus Cap was awesome. As Shannon said, I was really like, oof, you know, like the number of times that Bucky and Cap have looked at each other and said, I'm with you till the end of the line. <laughs> and then to have him just be like, guess this is the end of the line. Like, yep. I was like, fuck. And I mean, and that's what I mean about good fan service. I mean, you're just going down the line, seeing these yeah. things and you're having these great, you get your Peter Parker movie moment, you get your Cap versus Bucky, but it's being done really well. Mm -hmm. And they're having so much fun doing it that you can't help but have fun watching it. And kind of to the point about going back and forth from, oh, we've got the, the blam, blam, blam moment. And then you've got hope getting scratched. That's what I think made this episode work is mm -hmm. that it was just you were getting whiplash because mm -hmm. you were going from like something that was legitimately really funny. Yeah. And then just they just whipped you and be like, oh, fuck. Yeah. And like that, that back and forth is really what I think made this work because you just were never sure what to expect next. Yeah. A great point absolutely felt that way too throughout uh all right let's move on to the next section here peter uh try you know hope is sitting down there and uh, you know she i think she makes that comment about peter and the cape at this moment it's a really nice comment that it fits him and uh, but anyway hope is uh sitting down there and uh, peter tries to cheer up and she says how do you do it peter how do you do it and peter talks about all the people has lost in his life and this is the first time he mentions Uncle Ben in it any MC, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. Yeah, and then says, "Oh, May. believe me, Twitter, Twitter made it real, real clear that this was the first time okay. that Uncle Ben came up." <laughs> I was like, "Wait, is it the first time?" And then, and then says what May did say. So clearly, Aunt May has passed away as well. So sad to see that as well. Talking about how he has had to endure all the things he's had to endure. So just practice. He tries to keep a level head about all these things. Uh, we hear that the train is out of fuel. Uh, and uh, the zombies are out outside and you know they were trying to they were telling hope to hold on they're gonna get there they're gonna you know we're not gonna put her out we're gonna kind of get her cured uh, but then the train runs out of fuel and uh, uh, Kurt's the one that tells him that and Kurt tells him the good news and the bad news they have to walk through this field of zombies <laughs> to get to Lehigh Lehigh rather and uh, uh, hope knows that she is out of time uh, and then hope sacrifices her or verbally says she's going to sacrifice herself because she says you guys don't have to walk through them you can walk over them um, I didn't know mm. what she meant I didn't know what she meant I just didn't know what she meant until she did it and I was like oh this is brilliant uh, anyway, Hope talks about the guilt she feels because she was obsessed to bring her mom back, and that's what led to all of this. It isn't, but she feels that way. Then the ep then you see her become giant, and I'm telling you, this was incredible. The episode goes silent, and yep. Hope just becomes giant and walks over all these zombies and then calmly plops them over the gate. And as they've been climbing her through the whole time, 
Hope asks Peter to smile for her one more time as she falls back and is consumed by the zombies. Jesus, that was such a beautiful moment. Then Bucky notices the zombies aren't climbing the fence. What's that all about? And uh, Kurt starts to scare everyone with the Baba Yaga stuff. And then Vision shows up. Whoa, I forgot about Vision. Vision says the Mind Stone emits some kind of signal, low frequency signal that keeps the zombies at bay. They don't like it. So he thought he could use the invoice. He leads them into the base and shows them what he's been working on. He can use this info to reverse the effects of the disease. When they asked if it worked, he presents them with the still living head of Ant-Man. I mean, just brilliant. It's perfect. Just the head. You're not even like, oh, you're more just like, this is perfect. This is so funny. Uh, and he's making a few jokes and making some uh, funny little comments over there. Uh, they th Then they think that Vision, with his ability to do this, can cure others. Uh, Banner suggests blasting the frequency using a satellite. Uh, Vision says the technology required to do so is beyond human capability. Okoye says not Wakanda, son. We got that shit in Wakanda. So Barnes says he's going to canvas the base. But Vision says he will not find what he is looking for. Let's stop here. Shannon, great sacrifice from Hope. Um, you know, Peter Parker once again kind of coming through, trying to cheer everybody up. But then the, the appearance of Vision. Wow, what did you think of all of this section of this particular episode? Well, even in the comics, Peter Parker is a is a very optimistic character. Yes, true. I mean, mm -hmm. I, like I'm thinking like one of the few times that he does kind of snap is House of M when he sees how much better mj's life is without him in it um so the fact that he is keeping this you know keeping this brave front and he had a great line it kind of reminded me of one of cap's lines from endgame when he says you know my my aunt may used to say if we don't keep smiling when they can't then we may as might as well just be gone too <sighs> so just such a pure just such a pure hearted peter parker moment and then as things are getting kind of serious we get that we we get the the field of zombies that seems yeah. impossible to pass but we get kurt with that mm -hmm. funny line like hey we have, we have to get through them you know and just he's just such a funny character and then watching watching giant wasp oh. kind of you know step mm -hmm. over step over all the zombies instantly i'm like all right are we going to see giant wasp in quantum mania are she and giant man gonna play play soccer with with Kang as the ball, <laughs> um, but then <laughs> that moment that all these zombies are climbing her and she has that heartbreaking line of just like, you know, smile for me, Peter. It's like, oh my God, oh. this should not be getting me so so emotionally torn up yeah. right now. But then even uh, Vision has a great kind of uh, uh, out of character co comedic line. It's like one of the advantages of being an Android is you're not on the menu. I mean, mm -hmm. that's. That's such a that's such a human line. That's not something that we would necessarily associate with with Vision saying. But they get inside the base, mm -hmm. and Vision full on is letting Bucky go die. Like yes. he could have stopped him <laughs> rather than just saying something slightly ominous and not having well, anyone react to it. He did try to stop him. He said, uh, "What's it, Captain Barnes? Captain Barnes?" And he goes, "He, goes, you're not he, he said you're, you're not going to find what you're looking for. That is not trying to stop him. That's saying, <laughs> hey." Maybe don't go that way. There is a much <laughs> clearer way he, he could fair. have articulated that. Fair, fair. Hey, Bucky, don't go on the other side of that door. But then getting to get that. Oh, did we get to the peak at Wanda yet or no? I'm no, skipping yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. No. Strike it. Strike it. I said uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a spoiler review, so it's fine. Uh, Mikey, what did you Wanda. think about this section and the hero moment from Wasp? I mean, this beautiful it, removing of the sound as well, man. Yeah, I. First on the Peter Parker of it all, like it, it is like it is it is it is inherent in Peter Parker's character that as funny as Spider Man is, and as much as we love him, and as much as we love his jokes, like dude is dude is defined by loss, and a lot yes. of superheroes, a Good lot point. of superheroes, you could you know Bruce Wayne is defined by loss, like loss is a part for a lot of superheroes, but Peter Parker really is someone who just gets knocked down over and over and over again, and keeps getting up and keeps going, and that's like a core part of him, and so. To give him this speech in this moment when Hope is at her lowest. I mean, like, they're like, yeah. Hope is gone. And that he's the one that stands up and gives this, like, straight from the heart, like, out of the blue, like, li literally, my mom, my dad, mm -hmm. Uncle Ben, Mr. Stark, now happy. I've lost a lot. And when he went, but my Aunt May says, and then he pauses and goes, used to say, I oh. was like, get the fuck, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here with this. Like, it was so, 
affecting. Yeah. And like, yeah. I get it. Like, we're all superhero nerds. We are all primed to be hit in the feels by these moments. But when they do it in exactly the right way, and to me, for me, this was exactly the right way. Like, it was so yeah. good. And then it in turn made Hope saying to Peter, hey, Peter, smile for me. Like, just, it was, it was just, Ugh. it's like, it's like they already, they already shoved the knife in your heart and then they just went, Rah! uh, and John, you're right. One of the most affecting things that people don't think about is when you take all the sound effects yeah. out of a scene and just let it be the music. And that sequence, when she's walking through that zombie horde with all of them in her hands and Peter's like peeking through her, her, uh, the opening in her fingers and she kind of places it. And right when she places them down is where sound sort of comes back. Yeah. Uh, it, it's beautiful. I mean, it's just straight, straight, gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful moment. And yeah, I had forgotten about Vision is too. And this is where like the what if series is so much fun is there's so much going on and you're so discombobulated that you're never quite sure what's going to happen. And so then when Vision shows up, you're like, oh, fuck, I forgot about him. And then you're like, yeah, I guess he would be totally fine. And like right away, I, like I thought the fact that the Mind Stone uh, is a deterrent to a disease that is a brain disease actually mm. was kind of a very smart idea. I was like, oh, that's... That's pretty clever. Um, and then, yeah, when Scott turns around, I'm like, okay, we're doing a Futurama joke, and he's got dad jokes out the wazoo. And you're like, okay, cool. Like it, and it's very in keeping with Scott Lang's character. And you know, it just it brought that levity. Yeah. And it, again, this is the roller coaster of this episode. It gives you a nice little bit of levity, and they're like, oh, we've, Vision has the cure. We can go to Wakanda. Things are looking up. Scott Lang is dad joking everywhere. This is great. And then Bucky leaves and like Vision says that line and you're like, mm, I, I, don't, I don't know what's going to happen now, but I feel like you're about to do something to me again. And they do. Yeah, they do. Uh, Emma, what did you think about this whole section? What stood out for you? What really kind of touched you or affected you as you were watching this? Well, I was very, very upset about Aunt May. It was like, no. <laughs> yeah. Not Aunt May. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm just going to echo the sentiments of, I, I said it at the beginning of the episode, uh, Peter Parker is a very pure boy, the whole, and I thought it was really funny and good writing when he said, oh no, that's Hope. And hey, that's your name. It can't be a coincidence. Like, that, was, yeah, that was great. Um, and I mean, you have to have that heroic sacrifice hmm. moment and i think that what goes on with hope in this particular sequence is kind of interestingly echoed in what we're about to talk about hmm. with vision coming up i also <sighs> am not positive if um there was a script for Paul Rudd or if they just put him in front of a microphone and were like, yeah, Paul, Paul Rudd away. <laughs> this is what happens. What would you say? This is what happens. Yeah. What would you say? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. It's very funny. Yeah, yep. absolutely. By yep. the way, I do want to mention, it's kind of interesting to deny Guerrero is back in the room full of zombies again. The world. Full oh, of yeah. Again, right? Little Michelle. Uh, <laughs> I. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that when they were going down the list of people that they could include, oh, yeah. in, addi oh. in addition to the fact that Okoye is just awesome and should be included as often as possible, yeah. I am sure they were like, oh, wait a minute. As we are looking at zombie nods and references, you can't not have her. You've yeah. kind of got to have her there. I, I thought she was going to make a Walking Dead joke or some kind of joke somewhere, but I guess she she, she didn't. I mean, you know, there. she was slicing zombies in half, not with Katana, but with, you know, her, That's a good point. her Dora Milaje, like... <laughs> Yes, spear, spear thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. really I think I think that is the actual term. Yeah, spear thing. Spear thing. <laughs> it's on the toys. Um, yeah, yeah um, uh, great stuff overall here. All right, so let's move on. Vision here has, uh, we find out as Bucky is going through this kind of area here trying to canvas the barracks or the base there, he, saw, he, see, he hears this noise. And it's at this moment that I was like, oh, this makes sense. Why Kurt said Baba Yaga, the witch. Boom, boom. I started putting yeah. it all together there. And then we hear Chadwick Boseman. We hear T'Challa. We're not done with T'Challa. I knew we weren't done with T'Challa. And we hear him. He is on the table. My man's leg is gone. His right leg is gone. That was rough. And then we hear what is happening here. And that is that uh, Vision has, in essence, been feeding Scarlet Witch and luring innocent people to this base 
to feed them to Scarlet Witch. Uh, Black Panther says that he thought Vision was saving him, but he actually fed him uh, Black Panther's leg. So that's pretty messed up. I get that it's love, but Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, he's been keeping, like I said, uh, he's been keeping her at the base and feeding her. We see all this. And uh, then we hear her uh, breaking out of this confinement because <laughs> we'd seen the windows kind of cracking. And she appears in this bathing red light. And she immediately yank, it was a yanks in Kurt, I think, right? Or is it, mm -hmm. no, it's yanks, Kurt. Kurt's yeah. Kurt. <laughs> yanks in Kurt. And she rolls out. Uh, her and Bucky go at it for a little bit. Everyone is go, going at it, trying to get out of the situation. They get to Vision. Vision eventually mm -hmm. understands what's happening. Acquiesces this thing, pulls them out of there. They all run out of the situation. But not without Paul uh, Paul Rudd or Ant-Man saying when Guardian Leviosa, which that's a Warner Brothers <laughs> DC thing. I don't know how he's allowed to say that in a Marvel movie, but I guess it's allowed. And he jumps through that thing. I don't know how they got away with that. Uh, but they got through. But then Okoye, Okoye gets caught by the witch and she yanks it her to her. And I was like, oh, damn it, damn it. So And she says Wakanda forever, son of a bitch. That broke me when she said that. So anyway, um, and then we see that uh, then Vision says, there's a Quinjet over there. Get over there. You guys can get out that way. He kind of uh, puts a whole, uh, uh, I don't know, essentially has the base fall in on itself by using his Mind Stone, <laughs> then pulls the Mind Stone out of his head when he says he has to atone for what he does, did, and sacrifices himself. Um, uh, then Wanda sees the Vision body. She tries to attack um, Bruce Banner, but he becomes the Hulk to knock her off a little bit. Then he said uh, they run to the Quinjet. They're all in there. They realize that they're not going to be able to get out without getting rid of the zombies. So Bruce Banner now uh, volunteers to sacrifice himself uh, and gives the Mind Stone to Peter Parker to cure people. When Parker says, no, I don't want to lose another person um, at all. And Banner runs into the zombies and becomes the Hulk and fights Wanda amongst the zombies. And the Qu just as the, It looks like the Quinjet is going to escape. And they're turning on the engine and the engine doesn't work. Eventually, they get the engine to work. They fly out. And as they're going over the field here, what do we see? Of course, giant wasp <laughs> zombie standing up, tries to grab the Quinjet. They eventually pull away from her. And uh, Scott Lang is just, br uh, just it's the first time you see him be really sad. And he's, he's just crying for hope and then says, damn, that's the second time she's saved my life. So really emotional moment. So it looks like we're out of it. They're, it looks like the next morning they're flying towards Wakanda. Uh, they have faith that they can save the world. They look really hopeful. And then we hear the Watcher start telling us about how, you know, they, it doesn't matter. It's going to cost them the universe. They really do believe that they can save things. And then we zoom in. And who is it? It's Zombie, Zombie Thanos, Thanos with the <laughs> Infinity Gauntlet. Woo! So we go, we're definitely not done mm -hmm. with this story. Michael, hell of a way to end this episode. Get you there isn't enough to be continued or end of part one. They just figure it out. You're you're going to come back. There's going to be another part of this. Mm -hmm. What did you think about all of this uh, way to end the show, brother? Oh man. <laughs> all right. I well, I will say you know, like so we like we all make notes to like you know things that we can reference. We're going yeah. through. I'm going to read you my note that I wrote for this part. It's all in caps okay. and there's no punctuation. Right. The note is. Scarlet Witch is a zombie. Holy shit. Holy shit. Scarlet Witch is a zombie. Oh my God. And Vision loves her so much. He won't kill her. Oh my God. I die. <laughs> that, that is, that is how I feel about this part. It, in, in all the levels of brilliance that they do, like the Vision and Wanda romance, I mean, obviously because of WandaVision, but just in general, they have doubled down on this so hard. Yeah. And WandaVision mm -hmm. is all about Wanda more or less becoming the villain to save Vision, and here you have Vision becoming the villain to save Wanda, yeah. and I can't, I can't even deal with it. I can't deal with how sad and fucked up, and yet also beautiful and amazing it is. Like, I love these two and their love yeah. so much, I can't get enough of it. Um, really quick nod to the Marvel Zombies comic, uh, T'Challa having a missing leg, and Scott being headless is both kind of nods. In the zombie, in the oh. Marvel Zombies comic, Janet Van Dyne, as a zombie, uh, gets her head ripped off, and T'Challa, who is missing a leg, kind of carries her head around, <laughs> and eventually she sort of gets better and doesn't want to eat brains as much and whatever, but the <laughs> fact that there's a headless, uh, a headless character and a legless T'Challa, I thought were two kind of fun nods back to the source material. 
Um, yeah, when they go out and then Vision goes through his whole bit where he decides he can't leave. Well, first of all, Wanda as a zombie is absolutely the scariest thing imaginable. It's like, fucking terrifying. We have, yeah. we, have already, we have already established that Scarlet Witch is like the most powerful person in the Marvel Universe, basically. And right. her as a zombie with all of her powers, I was like, this is, this is the most <sighs> power. I've never seen a zombie like this in any movie and I don't ever want to. This is so scary. Um, and then the part that really kills me is that we have now had to watch Vision die. Oh, yeah. <laughs> four times. Many, many times. <laughs> twice in Infinity War, twice in Infinity War, once in WandaVision, yeah. and now again. Um, and, you know, this totally does echo, you know, instead of Thanos ripping it out, he rips it out himself, but like very much echoes to that. So that just all very upsetting to me. Mm -hmm. um, the moment where uh, Juan is about to bite Bruce and his arm hulks out and you realize that the Hulk arm is impervious to a zombie bite. Great, great kind of like really quick thing that you're like, oh, fuck, that's cool. Yeah. And then him going back in again, Hulk versus zombie Scarlet Witch is oh. just cool. Yeah. Like it's just a great moment. And then, yeah, Scott's really, Paul Rudd is so funny when he talks. Uh, and basically ever, but then when he gets that really soft tone in his voice and when he says, uh, that's so hope, like it was just, it was this perfectly sad thing and it just, it really broke me, but didn't break me nearly as much as T'Challa turning to Peter Parker on that Quinjet and saying, in my culture, death is not the end. They are still with us as long as we do not forget them. And I know when they wrote that line, they didn't know oh. what it was going to oh, mean. Yeah, but yeah, you can't, I'm like tearing up even saying it right now. Like yeah. you can't hear T'Challa say that and yeah. not in Chadwick Boseman's voice and not think about Chadwick Boseman and not have that just like punch you mm. so hard in the gut. And you're just like, God damn. Um, and then, like I said, you have this moment where you're like, that, I'm, I'm about to cry. And then you go to, a, you go like cut over to Thanos as a zombie with all the Infinity Stones, except the one that they're bringing to him. And you're yeah. just like, okay. And again, like we've kind of talked through this and, you know, each one of them, it's like, all right, Captain Carter's in modern day. Uh, all right. Uh, Ego's got Peter Quill. All right. Loki has taken over and Fury's getting Cap and uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, and then, all right, Evil Strange is in a little mirror dimension. All right, Zombie Thanos is about to get all the, the Infinity Stones. What the fuck is he going to do? It's just like right. they've like set all this up, and I'm really curious to see if all these dominoes are going to fall down this season or if all of these dominoes are going to get picked up in season two. Like What they're going to do with this is fascinating to yeah. me, but, hmm. but God, this was great. Yeah. Well, uh, to me, it's a little reminiscent of, you know, at the end of Infinity War, when Doctor Strange talks about the fact that he looked at every single possible mm. reality in order to find the one where everything was going to turn out okay. Like that, that's something that I feel has been really reflected in the What If series so far mm. of like, hey, if the events don't go exactly like this, it's, we're done. Like, yeah. yeah. End of the world. <laughs> Yeah, this is probably one of the things he saw. Emma was a zombie damn ending mm -hmm. for everybody. Uh, what did you think about this whole ending, Emma, uh, Emma, yourself? Like, what do you think about the whole setup? And then, of course, we're getting those touching moments. Yes. As we, come to, we even have a Peter moment going, haven't you guys ever seen these movies? Don't yeah. come out of it yet. When Scott's like, whoo, we made it. He's like, no, we didn't. <laughs> no, we didn't. Okay. Well, and I actually want to talk very specifically about that, but not before okay. I talk about the whole thing with Vision and oh. Wanda and the sort of parallel with Hope Van Dyne and how Hope is is somebody who has clearly, as we see her in a leadership role within this, mm. has accepted her own responsibility in what happened because she was so intent on bringing her mother back. That mm. So she feels a lot of guilt for what happened and she's clearly spent her entire existence trying to atone for what's going on. Mm. Meanwhile, Vision is the one entity that can potentially cure slash stop what's going on and yet he can't bring himself to actually do it because of the fact that he, it mentions that Wanda wouldn't be able to be cured because yep, right. she's too powerful basically. And so he's choosing like to preserve the one thing that he personally loves instead of actually doing the responsible thing and saving everybody. Yeah. So I just thought that yeah. that was really interesting. Also it was very reminiscent. I mean, it's not exactly the same thing at all, but in 
the Dawn of the Dead remake, the Zack Snyder one, there's a whole storyline where there's this couple and the wife is pregnant, yep. but she gets bitten by a zombie. Uh, and the husband, instead of like revealing to everybody what's going on, he basically like quarantines her and allows her to, con as a zombie, to continue to carry this baby, which then of course, oh, shocker, turns out to be a zombie baby. <laughs> zombie baby! Um, uh, so, so, so to me, it was a little bit reminiscent of that, of this whole idea of like, I know what the right thing is to do here, but I'm not, I can't bring myself to do it. Yeah. Um, and then again, when he, finally does that's a super important moment yeah now i will point out too that peter bringing up the haven't you guys seen these movies <laughs> kind of thing so i felt that the ending of this was an homage to both the original dawn of the dead and also the dawn of the dead remake because oh. in the in the original dawn of the dead they're flying away in the helicopter but the fuel level on the helicopter is super duper low so you're like are they gonna make it i don't know in the Dawn of the Dead remake, they basically get away on a boat and they have this whole idea that zombies can't like walk through water. So if they go to this island, they're gonna be fine, but then they get to the island and in the ending credits, you see that uh, they were totally wrong about that. And it's totally infected with zombies, which again, it's like they are, they are flagging towards this hope of, we're gonna get to Wakanda. We've got the Mind Stone. We're gonna broadcast this. We're gonna cure everybody. But zombie Thanos is already there. <laughs> Waiting, so. for that, waiting for that stone, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also I loved um, uh, <laughs> the, the, the cloak basically becoming Scott's body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right, you guys can high five. I'm no, I won't take it personally. Nope. <laughs> uh, 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 Shannon, what, what did you enjoy about this ending and what did you uh, like about how it, where it took us uh, with Thanos, zombie Thanos? I mean, definitely everything that Vogel and Emma already pointed out, but the things that, that did not get pointed out, one, Bucky's a badass, you know, oh, as, yeah. as zombie Wanda's looking at Vision, she kind of has that kind of zombie whimper. He's taking shots at her. She's stopping the bullets just sort of, just sort of unconsciously. And as they're running for the quad jet and Peter calls, calls out to Bucky and Bucky's just, just run. Like that's yeah. such a great zombie movie moment. Mm -hmm. And one, we don't know that Bucky died. I right. mean, no, Wanda, absolutely. Wanda flung him across New Jersey, right. but, but he may have survived. And then at the end, like you get that, get that heartbreaking moment of Scott seeing sort of a zombie hope as uh. the jet is flying away. And then she takes a zombie and uses it as a projectile. <laughs> <laughs> and <he> goes, what? <laughs> I mean, that was so freaking funny. And then you immediately get more the, the, the touching moment where, where Scott is talking about, well, that's hope. That, that's 100% hope. And then it bounces to comedy again because Peter's like, oh, yeah, that's right. You're an Avenger. He's like, yeah, totally. Well, you know, uh, you know, in my heart, at least. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get the ominous ending with Thanos. I mean, the, the entire episode was just, it was, it was ping-ponging back and forth between, ha ha, no, ha ha, no, ha ha, no. And I guess I, I guess some folks online kind of had an issue with that. Um, for me personally, I didn't. I thought it I, was hugely enjoyable. I feel what? like that is the key. Like the concept of the zombie comedy is not new. There are a yeah. lot of zombie comedies, and the ones that are really successful do that because you have to ping pong back and forth between. And this is the thing: is like, don't get me wrong, I really like Zombieland. But for me, what Zombieland lacked were the really touching moments. Right. Um, unlike, say, Shaun of the Dead. Right. Right. Hundred percent. Even when the, the boyfriend, the kind of jerky boyfriend, gets killed, that's a that's a moment. Oh, yeah. You feel that when it happens in Shaun of the Dead. Absolutely, yeah. I agree with you. I think there's not, you know, because I mean, uh, Jesse and uh, Woody. I mean, are they going to be touching me? It's not. It's tough with those two and yeah. the characters they presented. You could have had a touching moment, Emma. And with Abigail, for yeah. sure. Uh, but yeah, that's a great point you bring up, uh, Emma. I also think the Vision Scarlet Witch thing, this is yet another chapter Ugh. in this relationship, right? Because Vision knows, Vision is always conflicted uh, in these situations until he has to make a decision. Uh, but here, Vision, he has her tra He has her essentially contained. And remember, she hasn't fed for days, according to him. Mm -hmm. So he has her contained because he knows how dangerous she is. So yep. he understands that she's dangerous. He thinks he can control the situation. If he just feeds her and keeps her alive and whatever, she won't go uh, destroy the whole world. So he understands the thing, but he can't bring himself to, as you said, uh, to, to administer the cure because he knows he can't cure Wanda. 
and he comes from the Captain America school of doing things. Well, if it, I can't say my best friend, fuck everybody else. It's really tough to see that when you see it sometimes, but it works in this situation because of their relationship um, overall, you know? Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. he'll send you know, a letter. I, maybe he'll send a letter to the world. <laughs> hey, sorry about everything. Here's you my know what, Johnny? Call me if I, hope, I hope when shit goes down, I hope I hope that I don't need to be saved by you because you've made it. <laughs> If you have made you it real clear. People, I gotta let you go. <laughs> that you will not be there. You, you know what? It's the I'm gonna tell you right now. I will. I will. I will. Steve <laughs> Rogers. It. I would save. I would save your ass. Don't you dare you right save now. me to sacrifice thirty people. I'd be so mad. And now, and now it's a double win because I would do it because I would feel like it was the right thing to do. But now I would really do it just so I could pull you up and go like this. I told you so. <laughs> and then I'd zombie bite you. Anyway. <laughs> I, I, and, and, and I would like to point out the irony of John critiquing Steve Rogers whilst wearing a Captain America t-shirt. Oh, right it's, the, it's the blue one. So it's a different, it's a different Rogers. Anyway, <laughs> that's a good point. I do like Captain America, but he's got his one. Uh, anyway, fantastic episode overall. Any final uh, thoughts before we wrap up here? I, I just, I really do love how and I know that this is actually what some people are like maybe having a little bit of a problem with, but I love that each week has been so different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love I love that the feel, the tone, the level of humor, the level of drama. I mean, like like you guys were saying, to go from last week's Doctor Strange episode, which was just so heartbreaking and dark and rough and sad, to go to this, which was super funny and just like a really fun zombie romp, but still had some really heartfelt moments. Like I just yeah. like you never quite know what you're gonna get from we even once we know, oh, next week is Killmonger, but like we don't you still don't quite know what you're gonna get. Yeah. And it's just it's what's making what if so fun is because even each week is just a complete surprise. Yeah, yeah. which is yeah. a joy. It's very reminiscent of like Twilight Zone or Amazing mm -hmm. Stories or all yeah. those serialized things that we've enjoyed growing up throughout the multiple generations uh, uh, that we have television for. So it's very cool. Yeah. Um, okay, well, thanks everybody for watching this uh, spoiler review of episode five of season one of What If. We really appreciate it madly. Uh, Shannon, what do we have to tell them? Yeah, if you'd like to follow us on social media on Twitter, it's at geek underscore buddies on Instagram at the underscore geek underscore buddies. If you'd like to follow me on social media on Twitter, it's at Shannon underscore McClung on Instagram at Shannon the Geek Buddy. If you would like to follow Mr. Vogel, it is at MK2. And if you would like to follow Mr. Roca, it is at the Roca says. Mikey? Well, if you have survived the zombie apocalypse <laughs> and you are looking for friends, the Geek Buddies are here. Come find us. You can help other people find us find those survivors and here's how you can hit the like button below you can subscribe to johnny's outlaw nation page you can leave us some comments let us know what you thought of this zombie superhero apocalypse uh if you are listening to this right now on uh, spotify or apple Podcasts, stop for a second and leave us some stars leave us some comments it helps us go up in the rankings and uh the best thing that you can do is retweet this video send it to other survivors let them know that there is hope there is the geek buddies hey and we and we will keep you smiling <laughs> and we are ready to believe you uh <laughs> thank you thank you all for joining us and a big big thank you to emma fife again and emma where can people find you and everything you got going on yeah i mean if you're still out there and twitter's still functioning <laughs> i'm at emma fife on twitter at emma fife on instagram uh and if you're looking for uh some material to pass away the the days uh while you're hiding in a in a storage container <laughs> hanging over new york city but you happen to have internet access uh if you check out the fandom games youtube channel uh i just had a video drop last week uh it is part of a series called rabbit hole where we go on deep historical dives into things and i went uh, i did a video about the evolution of the use of time loops in gaming and other Ooh. media nice yeah that very proud of how it turned out a, yeah i'm sure that must have taken a lot of research yes a lot to explore on that i'm sure <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, go and watch that, ladies and gentlemen. Go and support everything Emma Fife is doing. And uh, you can uh, do uh, follow us everywhere that uh, Mike and Shannon told you to follow us. Take care of yourselves. Be well. And we'll talk to you next time with another brand new spoiler review episode here from the Geek Buddies. <gasps> <gasps>